Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a quick and easy painted wall text effect using Adobe InDesign. So if you've got a spare five minutes, this is a great little tutorial for honing some new InDesign skills. So all you'll need is a couple of fonts. Here I'm going to use Buckwheat and Lunchbox Slab, both of which you can find over on Envato Elements. You'll also need a brick wall photo for the background and a pack of paint masks. You can find the links to these at the top of the written tutorial. You'll also need InDesign and also access to a vector program like Adobe Illustrator. All right, so let's get started. You can create your text effect on any page size in InDesign, but here I'm working on an A3 landscape page, just so it gives me plenty of room. First up, let's set up some layers for our design. So go to the layers panel over here on the right and double click on layer one. Let's rename that wall. Okay. Create another new layer by clicking on the new layer button at the bottom here and rename this one paint. Okay. And one final layer at the top, let's call that one type. Cool. Okay, so let's lock the type and paint layers and work on wall first. So before we start designing, we also need to create some color swatches to use on our text effect. So go to the swatches panel over here on the right and choose new color swatch. Let's name this one mustard and set the CMYK levels to cyan seven, magenta 22, yellow 83, and key or black to zero. Click add and then done. Okay, so we need four more swatches. Under the new one, let's call this one red and set the levels to cyan zero, magenta 84, yellow 77 and key zero. Add and done as before. Another one, let's call this one off white. Set the levels to cyan four, magenta four, yellow two and key zero. And another one, the name is going to be stone, cyan 10, magenta 12, yellow 32 and key zero. And we're nearly there, bear with me. Final swatch, let's call this one green and set the levels to cyan 83, magenta 30, 30, yellow 89 and key 17. Okay, so we can get started with the fun stuff now. So working on the wall layer, select the rectangle frame tool or hit F on your keyboard and drag across the whole page. So with this frame selected, go to file place, navigate to the image of the brick wall and click open. Okay, cool. With the image frame selected, head up to object effects and transparency. Bring the opacity down to 75% and then click OK. Switch to the rectangle tool, which is M on your keyboard and create a shape across the page, extending the right and left edges outwards by about a quart page width more. Cool. So from the swatches panel, set the fill color of this shape to stone. Okay, so with this shape selected, head back up to object effects and transparency as we did before. Set the mode to multiply and bring the opacity down to 55%. Click on gradient feather at the bottom of the windows left hand menu, set the type to radial and allow the gradient to become more transparent towards the center of the shape. Then click OK to exit the window. OK, so with our backdrop now set up, we can start formatting some nice typography for our design. So lock the wall layer and unlock the top layer, which is type. Use the type tool to create a text frame centrally on the page typing in a word like Oaxaca, for example. From the top controls panel, set the font to Buckwheat Painted. Let's switch the font color to green from the swatches panel. With the text frame selected, go to Object Effects Transparency. Set the mode to multiply and the opacity to 95%. 
Let's add an inner glow effect to this too. So click on that over on the left side and switch the mode to normal. Bring the opacity down to 40%, set the size to 0.9 millimeters and add about 15% 1.5 noise and then click OK. Awesome. Right, let's make a copy of this text frame. So head up to edit, copy, edit, paste. Let's switch the font color of this to off-white, then back to object effects transparency, uncheck the inner glow box to remove that effect, and then adjust the transparency mode back to normal and click OK. Right click on the copy of the text frame and choose arrange and center back. So you want to position this to the bottom left, just peeking out a bit from behind the green text to create a slight shadow effect. We can add a little bit of introductory text to our text effect too. So create a new text frame to the top left and type in some intro text like Bienvenido a. Let's set the font of this text to lunchbox slab bold and switch up the font color to red. So you just want to rotate it a bit upwards to make it a little bit jaunty. And you could also add a bit of false italic to make the text lean to the right a bit. That's going to make it look a bit nicer. For this text frame, go to Object Effects Transparency as before. Set the mode to multiply and the opacity down just a little bit to 95%. Click on Drop Shadow in the left hand menu. Click on the little tiny coloured square next to the mode menu to switch the effect colour to Mustard. You also want the mode set to Normal. Up the opacity to 100%. Set the distance to 3mm the angle to 51 degrees. Set the spread to around 70% and the noise to about 13, 13%. Then click on Outer Glow and set the opacity of this to 55%. Add about 30% noise and then click OK. OK, cool. Our text effect's looking really good. A final touch would be just to drop in a paint splash behind the text, so let's do it. In the Paint Mask Pack, open the EPS Format folder and find the image called 19 and open that up in Adobe Illustrator or any other vector software you prefer. Let's right click and ungroup the vector. Then from the Swatches panel, choose New Swatch. Set the levels to Cyan 7, Magenta 22, Yellow 83 and Key 0 to mimic the mustard colour that we've used in our InDesign document. Then apply this new swatch to the fill of the paint splash. OK, cool. Now to bring it over to our InDesign document, first edit copy the paint splash in Illustrator. Then head back to InDesign and lock the type layer and then unlock the middle layer, which is paint. OK, then you can edit paste your paint splash directly onto the page. Let's get that lined up centrally behind the green text and you can stretch it and tweak it to fit. And then when you're happy with it, go back to Object, Effects and Transparency and set the mode to Multiply. Click OK. Awesome, and there we have it, a really cool distressed paint text effect that would look amazing for street food branding or restaurant menus or flyers, so try it out.